Good morning, Bill Hurtado with TransWest Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. We are about 25 miles north of Denver at this location here, and we have several locations in the state, but uh, here we are in Frederick today, and it's my privilege to show you our brand new 2023 Winnebago Era. This is the 70X model. So the X, um, I believe they came up with that because of the four captain's chairs right here, uh, give you that nice area for dining and what have you. I'll get to that in just a sec. I wanted to point out that this is on the 22 chassis. This is not an old chassis on a 23. Uh, so this has all the latest safety enhancements, which I'll talk about inside in a moment. But looking at this thing, we've ha we have some really nice features on here, such as the highly polished Alcoa aluminum wheels and full running board set up on this. This has a really, really nice, easy entry, spacious interior. The Sprinter vans, Mercedes, uh, really know how to do it right. This particular one's gonna have the controls for the seats and the door over here. And that's one way you know it's an upgraded model. If it's the manually operated seats, say like in the Revel, uh, then it doesn't have a lot of the features that this one does. Now, this also has three memory positions for the seats over here. So uh, if you have three different drivers, very easy to select yours and, and move along. So talk a little bit more about the dash at the end of this video. Let's do a little walk around the outside. This is a two-wheel drive model. So two-wheel drive um, has been kind of an issue on the older ones because they had such lacking uh, ground clearance down below. Uh, this one's actually pretty nice. They've brought this up a little bit so you've got a little more space down there. Obviously on a four-wheel drive, it's gonna be lifted even more. The other difference in two-wheel drive and four-wheel drive is that uh, you're not going to be able to get this power door on the four-wheel drive. It's only available on the two-wheel drive. So just wanted to point that out. A little FYI for you. This model, the 70X, comes with a full-length patio awning here. It's really big. It's so nice not having it cut off the last few feet or starting over the middle of the door. This is a beautiful patio and very big. You've got separate porch light in behind the door and awning light up here. So nice way to light up this whole area out here. Winnebago has also installed the Jalousy style windows right here, as you can see. So what's nice about these is they can be open if it's raining. You can still get some airflow through there. But also when this drops down against the seal, you've got no exposed rubber. So that's not shrinking or cracking down the road. These are going to last a long, long time. I think they've been using the Jealousy style windows like this for close to 10 years. And the rubber on everything I'm looking at, the older stuff, is still in great shape, still holding up. Over here, we do have solar on board this unit. And I'll show you the controller when we go inside. But you can expand that solar if you so desire. Uh, through the plug-in over here. So this will go through the same controller that's inside. So very easy setup. You don't have to have a separate controller on the panel like many of the things you'll find aftermarket. Uh, this one you can use a straight panel in here and goes in through the controller. Over here we've got AC, or sorry, uh, DC connection uh, for say you wanted to run a DC powered television outside. Uh, and then also your cable TV uh, output over here. So this will work either on the antenna up above or if you decide to hook up to cable TV from outside or if you want to add satellite to this thing. You can do it all through this plug on the outside here. And then of course down below your patio outlet is your standard 110. So AC, DC, all your TV connections and solar all in one tight little spot right here. Very nice. Okay, as we move around the back right here, Winnebago has put on a accessory port for propane. So that comes off of your propane system that's on board right now and it's low pressure. So any appliance you wanna put outside right here cannot have its own regulator on it. Double regulation just doesn't work, but that's okay. 
Uh, if you have a favorite appliance with a regulator on it, that can be bypassed. You can still use this port over here. We also have the 5,000 pound hitch on this thing. And I can attest to that. This will pull 5,000 pounds quite nicely. So good job on Sprinter, you know, with that, uh, with that 3.0 V6, um, 325 foot pound of torque engine. What I love about this thing, um, the, the Sprinter vans, they get excellent fuel mileage traveling down the road. And it doesn't matter if it's this longer one ton dually or the shorter three quarter ton single rear wheel, they all get really close to the same within a half a mile per gallon. So it's not unusual to see this thing getting you 20 miles per gallon heading down the road. Unheard of in most RVs. You also have the seven way plug in back here. So no matter what you want to hook up back here, be it something with brakes, backup lights, or just go drop down to a standard four or five pin connector, you can do everything from a seven way. The ladder on this thing. So this ladder, um, this is actually in the storage position right now. This little deal flips open and you have a key lock so somebody can't steal your ladder here. But when this comes off, this ladder now will come around to the side and with you, with, as you can see, you've got the roof rack on this thing, full length. So the cups on top of that ladder will attach anywhere you want along the side here. No need to hook up down below. It's already got the rubber feet on it and you can climb up in any area that you want. So nice design right there. Now the other side did have dual window openings. I only opened one over there, uh, but you've got great ventilation on this thing. I also have the attic fan running inside to keep a little air flowing through there. I'm gonna talk about this a little more when we get inside, but this is the vent for the Truma system. And the Truma system is both your water heater and furnace uh, combined into one vessel, if you will, of glycol. For heating, that vessel of glycol will pump around the perimeter of this thing and discharge heat in particular areas for you. So you have very nice even heating through the entire unit. The advantage here, of course, is it's uh, so efficient. Uh, it runs on just a tiny bit of fuel. Once that glycol is warmed up, everything is very easy to just maintain and not have to use a lot of fuel to keep going. The water heater aspect of it is similar in that the hot water line runs back and forth through the inside of that vessel of gly heated glycol. So you have unlimited hot water in this thing. So if you decide to take a nice long shower, you can certainly do it on this one. The uh, 2.5 kilowatt LP generator is mounted underneath, and that of course operates from inside. Uh, that's all that's needed for the air conditioning in this one, the microwave, your outlets. Uh, so it's a, a very nice generator made by Cummins and extremely low emissions on the LP. All right, moving along up this way, we do have hot and cold running water outside. So there is a little blue pigtail curly Q quick connector that goes on there with a sprayer on the end. So if you choose to clean up outside here or if you're you know a little risque and you don't mind showering out here, you can do it all, very simple. So hot and cold running water is very nice to have on this side of the unit. And then standard 30 amp plug. We just washed this thing. <laughs> Standard 30 amp plug uh, comes separate. It's mounted underneath in the back and you just pull that out, connect when you wanna be at the campground that way. All right, so down below here, this system, as you can see over here, you've got uh, everything you need to operate the discharge of the water system and the intake of water inside here. Whether you want to uh, fill your fresh water tank or just run normal on city water at a campground. Uh, you can do that very simple by turning the valves to the corresponding position. And then this is one of the finest features that the RV industry has ever come up with. This is called the um, macerator pump. And this now sends all of your waste through a one inch hose. This has 
standard garden hose fixture or fittings rather on the other end of that thing. So what I love about this system is you can flip the pump on and you can pump your waste a hundred feet away if you want. You can put it up inside a second story window if you need to. Uh, it's a fantastic system. They don't require you to use that real thin RV paper because it grinds everything up and pumps it out as a liquid at that point. So very sanitary, very efficient, and it's just wonderful to dump every time because all you're doing is taking that thing out, setting it in the hole, flipping your switch on, and letting her rip. So I love the system on here with the macerator pump. Over here is where your propane is. And many of you have heard me talk about this. Um, again, uh, may sound a little redundant if you watch a lot of my videos, but you walk up to any RV and you immediately know where the propane is in there because there's no locks on the area where the propane goes in. The reason for that, of course, is anybody has to be able to run up and uh, turn the propane off in case of an emergency. So there's your propane tank, very easy to pull up and say, fill her up. Uh, it's nothing you have to do yourself other than get close enough. So very nice. That's a 16 gallon uh, propane tank. However, you can only fill it to the 80% capacity overall. So, you know, like a five gallon barbecue tank will only go to four gallons, the 80%. All right, we're gonna talk more about the uh, cab on the inside, but over here, most of you that have been looking at these things um, have seen this many, many times, but Mercedes does a great job on their chassis right here. So everything is very easy to get to. We've got our windshield washer fluid over here brake fluid, oil fill and check, easy to get to, def to top that off, and then coolant reservoir or coolant overflow, same thing. Um, so very nice if you had to get some power outside here or jump this thing, your, your positive cable here becomes exposed when you push this back. And then you can hook up your cable to the negative post and the positive post and get a nice jump that way. Okay, so let's go to the inside. I picked this model specifically because it's something I would want myself. I call this, this is something I just made up myself, but I call this the Vegas Cruiser. So imagine, no matter what you wanna do, if you wanna grab six of your friends and everybody just jump in and go to Vegas, 12 hour drive from here uh, for you know the weekend, a week, whatever. It's so nice for all of us to travel in this thing, be belted in comfortably. We've got full bath, full kitchen. We can do whatever we want cruising down the road. We can get up and walk and stretch our legs a little bit. What a fantastic ability you have with this particular unit right here. But if it's just the two of you and you want to go out and use this thing yourselves as, you know, just camping and enjoying a nice little trip, these seats remove very easily. They just slide this lever and that'll lift right off of there. So these two rear captain's chairs can come out, stay home. You have a lot more access and room in here. And that's also good if you wanted to, say, haul something in here. You've got this big open space now to use that way. So that's very nice. You know, I have the awning extended out. The controls for the awning are right down here. And then the full battery disconnect is also down there. Now take a good look at those round vents next to the switches. Those are part of the Truma system. So those are heat registers that blow out among others that are throughout the unit right here. And that's how you get your even heating throughout the entire thing. It's probably, one of the very best inventions or rather innovations uh, the RV industry has come up with in the last 10 years. That's the Truma system. I'd love for the US to take credit on it, but it's a German made product. Over here, this is if you want to gravity fill your freshwater tank, you can do so right here. 
But remember over on the other side, when you're hooked to city water, you can still fill that uh, rapid with the turning of the valve and filling the tank that way. Um, and if you want to winterize yourself, which many of you know I'm a big fan of, instead of spending a lot of money bringing it into a dealership and tying up your time and having to come back and pick it up or drop it off or anything else, you can do it yourself in a matter of minutes. This entire unit can be winterized with one gallon of antifreeze, which I think it's about five bucks last time I looked, maybe six. And just by turning this to the winterized position, a hose connects here, drops into a jug of antifreeze. Now it's drawing from the jug instead of the fresh water tank. So this coupled with, um, with draining your fresh water tank makes it fast and easy to winterize this thing. Winnebago has put in a nice screen door that comes across here. There's been, uh, there's been different variations of that. This is the best so far. Uh, really nice, easy to operate, slide closed, and keep all that going. So we're gonna get a little tight in here, but uh, bear with me, folks. I'm gonna go back to the back and kind of show you how some of this stuff works. The first thing you notice from there is we've got halo lighting around the entire interior right here. And these are all dimmable lights. So really nice if you're traveling at night, you can have those dimmed down very low and still see everything, but not interfere with the driver having a bright light behind him right there. This has a uh, full length sofa across the back back here, which also converts into a bed. So if I hold my button right here, you can see how that will lay down. So we got three ways to use this as a bed. If you're not very tall, people will sleep sideways on here. If you're a little taller than that, you can certainly sleep on this thing as a twin bed configuration. And if you want even more space than that, there is a table mounted behind this panel that pulls out, sets on the pedestal right here. Or, I'm sorry, that table will sit on the rails right here. And then you can fill the entire section in with the cushions and make the entire thing one giant bed. So some flexibility there as to how you can go about using that. When you are in the Vegas mode and you're using this as the Vegas cruiser, of course, what's really nice is having uh, not just lap belts, but shoulder belts back here. You've got reading lights that are both blue and white. Many of you know the blue light on these things gives you the ability to see the, the lettering jump off the page really nice and not be so obtrusive with a bright light in the room. But if you want a bright light, you just hold down and you can have that as such. So television back here, no reason you can't watch a movie. Your people that you're taking on that trip can sit back here, belt it in, watch TV. Remember, cook a meal, have the air conditioning running, keeping the entire cabin cool. You can use the bathroom going down the road. How nice is this? It's, the flexibility is bar none, better than anything else out there. So many things you can do with this unit in different ways, if you will. Um, so the Vegas cruiser thing is just big to me. I think it'd be so fun to have a bunch of your friends and say, let's go, let's all jump in and go. And you don't have to stop for anything other than, you know, about every 500 miles, you have to stop and put fuel in because that's your range on this thing. But how wonderful is that? So I love the way Winnebago has designed things in here. Winnebago has been using the Technoform cabinetry for many years. And now some other manufacturers are starting to follow suit because they've found out how wonderful this stuff is. Technoform is made in Italy for exclusively for Winnebago for many years, but now for some others. What's so nice about these is the strength factor of Technoform, the very lightweight. So by having lightweight, you have more carrying capacity through the entire unit and they just hold up extremely well. So everything is just so easy to get to and use. Um, back here, we've got our floor mat and our manuals and everything on this. 
but a great setup. Really, really great. Down below over here, this area is where your AC breakers are. So very easy to get to. Next to that is going to be your propane leak detector. So in case you had a leak, that's going to warn you right away. All right. 12 volt fuses on this side. You can see the discharge duct over here for the uh, Truma system, keeping that area warm back there. All right, moving forward here, we do have a nice closet, um, ample space for quite a bit of hanging stuff. For a, for a B van, it's uh, very generous on the space right there. Let's talk about that for a second, B van. B van, that might be important to a lot of you because you would like to keep your RV at home. Maybe that's why you don't buy a big one because you're gonna make your neighbors mad, you're gonna make your HOA mad, you've got some covenant in your neighborhood that doesn't allow it. Well, this is not going to apply to that because this is just a van. This is like any cargo van on the outside. It doesn't stand out like an RV. So typically they're not gonna give you a hard time. This can be kept at home, you're saving all that money on storage and you've got your full-blown, fully self-contained motorhome you can jump in and go anytime. So it's kind of the best of both worlds in that regard. The bathroom area. These are bifold doors that will kind of implode, if you will, to open up this space. And not a huge bathroom, but it's big enough. I'm six foot tall, 250 pounds. If I want to shower in here, I can, I can get the job done. So it's big enough, but it's not too big to take up too much space from the outside over here. If you wanna use it for extra hanging area, you can certainly do that. And then you have a fan up inside here. Uh, you've got the little handheld bidet on the porcelain toilet. Really nice design on this thing keeping your toilet paper dry over here so separate sink inside it's great it's a, it's just a wonderful setup this is actually a little bit bigger bath than many of the class b's right here all right huge galley that's something you don't find very often. I can pick out a couple in my mind. Uh, a couple of manufacturers do a model with a big long galley like this, but they don't have the other stuff that this one has. Um, so I think this is the best fit all around. So lots of extra counter space. You've got your two burner over here and then your flip up sink with hot and cold over here. They never put anything flammable next to the cooktop. So where everything else is gonna be regular shades like this, it's never gonna be that way in the galley area if it's close to a flame. It's just an RV code, so you'll find that on every RV. Um, the microwave down here is both convection and microwave, so it can be used like a regular oven. And good drawer space that's kind of funny the way they did that because of the because of the configuration what's underneath it right there um, 12 volt refrigerator many of you have heard me talk about how i'm such a huge fan of 12 volt refrigeration so this will cool four times faster than an rv refrigerator this does not have to be level when you operate it and essentially it's working for free here because you've got ample solar up above to counter the amount of draw this has. Or if you're driving down the road, of course your alternator is feeding the batteries. So that's just a, it's just the smartest way to go right there. Um, it's a free refrigeration. So the addition to the storage I just showed you over there is over here. So there's actually a lot of space in this galley right here. Same thing with our overheads. I love this model because behind you, all the way down the side, across the back, and over on this side, you've got overhead storage. They used every bit of space for storage that they could. No voids, no dead spaces. It's a well laid out floor plan. 
All right, so uh, we've got 24 gallons of fresh water on board that we're carrying. We have, let me check my cheat sheet here. We have 19 gallons of gray holding capacity and nine gallons of black holding capacity. I already told you about the 16 gallon propane fillable to 80%. So take 3.2 off of that. All right. I mentioned early on that this thing has the 22 chassis on this 23 motorhome. And that's important because now we know that we have all the latest safety enhancements on this thing. So this is going to have the automatic braking, lane mitigation, the 360 camera view, the power seats in the doors, um, the, did I mention lane mitigation? I think I may have. Um, so everything is fully up to date on this thing as having the, the latest in, in enhancements on it. Um, let me go into reverse because I want you to see over here that we have the 360 view around this camera right here. That is huge. That's going to tell you about anything that's within the proximity of you being able to make contact if you steer the wheel the wrong way. Um, this also has the lines that move on the rear backup and it's going to track perfectly where those lines go. So you're backing into a space or you're wanting to get between two lines, you can do this without ever turning your head. It is a great, great system, very easy to use. We're in the middle position on the wide angle portion. So we can look straight down if we're hitching up to something and that'll tell us exactly where the, the, uh, re um, sorry, the coupler is on the trailer. And you'll see the ball down inside the red lines right there. So very easy to hook up that way. In normal view right here, we've got uh, a good view slightly off to the sides. And then in wide angle, we can really see off to the sides quite a ways. That's an, that's an amazing width right there, if you will. Uh, so that's kind of the default one right there that I like to use the most. We've got the, uh, we've got the uh, GPS in there right now. And with my thumb control right here, this is like a little mouse pad. Um, let me back up just a sec. All the controls over here handle this 10 inch screen which is also voice command, which is a really nice feature. And this over here handles my multifunction display directly in front of me. So I can do so many different things traveling down the road right here. Um, suppose I wanna to go to the home position and I wanna switch from navigation to radio. Maybe I have some media connected to it. I wanna know what's going on with the unit itself as far as you know levels and temperatures and everything else. I can add my own apps here. I can do uh, uh, the uh, Apple CarPlay or the uh, uh, other one. <laughs> I'm thinking about apps so much right now. Um, Android. Android, thank you. Um, so anyway, very simple to connect through here and go to the things that you want to see, be it 100% of the time. Now there's a way to disable the uh, voice command on this thing, and I haven't looked yet to see if it's enabled or disabled, but if you were to say, hey Mercedes, this one's enabled, okay? So that'll give me a chance to just not take my hands off the wheel or even my eyes off the road, and I can do everything I want via voice command right there, okay? So that's, that's another nice feature of having that 10 inch touch screen right there. Over here on this side, um, I have different things that I can go through. I can see what my miles are right now. Maybe I wanna see what my consumption is on fuel. Um, right there, I've got uh, like an accelerometer, if you will. So you can see your, also your boost on your uh, turbo. And then uh, right here, I can select my trip computer. See what I did on the last trip also. This unit has 844 miles on it right now because it drove in from Winnebago. And that just happens to be the distance from there. Also, we have the adaptive cruise on this thing so that you can set your distance to the car in front of you. Um, just really 
everything you can get today is here. It's, it's on this one and ready to go. Now, I don't know what they're coming out with next year, but I know they're no longer gonna have the V6 engine. Sprinter is dropping down to a four cylinder. Okay, um, you know, I'd like to think Mercedes knows what they're doing, but this six cylinder, I am so impressed with. Lots of power, great fuel mileage, good towing capacity. Um, up here, we've got some compartments that we can put different things in and hide those away from, you know, these are just compartments on this side and this side, but over here you've got your connectivity for your media, charging up your phone, that kind of thing. So nice setup in that regard. This is the 2023 ERA 70X. This is a nice motorhome that has a lot of flexibility on it. A lot of different things you can do with this one, whether it's two, four, six, seven people. Um, this is a, a great option for a wider range, a wide array of people. So please give this some consideration. Once again, I'm Bill Hurtado, Transwest Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. We're about 25 miles north of Denver. So when you see my 714 cell phone number right there, uh, I am not in Southern California. I'm here in Frederick, Colorado. So please text me, call me, email me, send me a smoke signal, whatever you wanna do to get a hold of me so I can tell you more about this thing and perhaps we can make this your next dream home right here. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you stopping in for another episode of YouTube Live and I'll patiently wait for your call. Thank you.